guys, and welcome back to another episode of Lost Bits, right here on Tetra Bit Gaming, the series where we explore the scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. So in my previous Deltarune Lost Bits video, I tested the waters to see if you guys would be interested in an Undertale video. And you guys absolutely smashed that video with likes, so here we are. Now whether you love or hate Undertale, there is no denying its success and impact on the gaming community. And until recently, I never even played the game. So forgive me if I don't understand some deeper lore or references in this video. And with all of that out of the way, there is a lot to cover in this video, so go grab Sans Undertale, it's time to find some lost bits. So to start things off, let's have a look at the game's unused audio, which surprisingly there is a decent amount of. In the interest of time, I'll only be playing short clips of each unused track that I think was interesting. First up is King Description. This track is just a more orchestral and fuller sounding version of the game over theme. With the word King in the file name, it is believed this track would have been used in some Asgore related scene. Then we have F Part 3, which is an unused variation of Flowey's boss music. Good old mini Plowboy. Next up is Piano, a track that was used in the Undertale demo after killing Toriel, but it goes unused in the full release. Yet another unused piano song, Ruins Piano is next, and just like the name suggests, it is a slow piano version of the song that is heard in the ruins. Next is a track simply known as Star. Star is a fitting name as apparently the song uses instrument samples that were used in the original Star Fox game. According to Toby Fox, this haunting melody was intended to be used in the fight against magic when his magic orbs turn into hearts. Undertale's start menu music changes as you befriend more characters in the game. However, only 6 of the 7 total songs are actually used. Here is menu 5 which is normally unheard. There are also a few sounds that go unused in Undertale, so let's bang through them quickly. We have a grunting voice for apparently a swipe, presumably for Metaton, <laughs> and then there's three unused flowy lines of him saying triple, triple. Jafe, Jafe, and ah. ah. Now on to Undertale's unused text strings. First up we have several error messages. These include error. Error, see you later. Arousing error. Wowie, nice error. Flagrant error. Error, pepibs. I'm a goofy goober, yeah, this error message. If you are reading this, I messed up somehow. This is an error message, really? And then my favorite, an entire error handler monologue meant for Sans. He would have said, I'll be honest, I have no idea what happened for you to get here. This is actually some sort of error handling message. So if you're getting this ending, tell whoever made the game, okay? They'll fix it, or if it's a novel situation, they might even add another ending to the game. Chances are though, you're just a dirty hacker, aren't you? Yeah, get out of here. Next is some unused monster history text labeled as Part 6. It basically outlines that the monsters don't get ill, but they describe those that are old or close to death as fallen down. Next is an unused section in the script for Metaton's quiz. 
It is found right after Metaton mentions that Alfie's names programming variables after her crush. So of course, those curious enough to go check the files to see who Alfie's crush is were met with the following message. LOL, if you came to this part of the code to see who I have a crush on, you're out of luck. There is also an unused script for Metaton requesting for you to be his mortal enemy. After rejecting his request, he will send you an invitation to, uh, let's see here, die. To which you could have responded, or just ignored. Next is a text string which just reads, Beepus Valley Granola Bars. Likely a spoof of Nature Valley Granola Bars, but with more Beepus. Then there are these two text strings found among the dialogue for the Photoshop Flowey fight. Alrighty then. Test Monster is an early version of Froggit used for, you guessed it, testing. They share many of the same lines, but these are the lines that are unused normally by Froggit. And in this line, we can see Toby Fox's frustration. And the last notable unused text string is Alfie's 17th lab entry, which is normally skipped in the true lab. It basically just explains that with too much determination, the bodies of the monsters begin to break down. So it looks like Undertale also has some items that were scrapped from the game. A croquet roll which would have healed 15 HP, pumpkin rings that would heal 8, stoic onions that would heal 5, a ghost fruit which would heal 16, and puppy dough ice cream which would heal 28 HP. There's also rock candy which would heal 1 HP and would even come with its own recipe for how to make it at home. But I think the recipe is a bit too complicated. Next up is a battle sequence that is unused. This battle would have been with RG3 and RG4, two royal guards that are mentioned in the game during a phone conversation with Undyne. They would have been seen as two friends that got into a fight, and trying to get them to put their differences aside would have been the way to pacify and spare them. After winning the battle, the sprites revert to a placeholder sprite that is just Eren's defeated sprite, for some reason. Now before we move on to Undertale's unused graphics, there have been several messages hidden in Undertale by Toby Fox in an attempt to deter hackers and data miners from spoiling the game and its secrets. These messages are found as audio files, text strings, and graphics, but I felt like they deserve their own little section in this video. Let's start off with the text that is found in Script Attention Hackers Number 2. Toby goes to say, Part of this game's charm is the mystery of how many options or secrets there are. If you are reading this, please don't post this message or this information anywhere, or doing secrets will become pointless. By the way, most of the seemingly unused text files are used. If you can find the in-game context for an asset, you can show it off, but if you can't, it probably means you haven't looked hard enough. Anything truly unused, I'll probably post myself later. Living in a world like this, where people can simply cheat out the answers from the code, your impatience has really damaged you, hasn't it? This message was changed in the version 1.001 update to a much shorter and more cryptic message. Next, let's have a listen to the Don't Spoil the Game audio track titled ABC123A. Hello, <laughs> have some respect and don't spoil the game. It's impossible to have mysteries nowadays. Because of nosy people like you. Please keep all of this between us. If you post it online, I won't make any more secrets. No one will be impressed. It will be your fault. <laughs> now that's creepy definitely wouldn't be listening to that alone in the dark. This was also changed in the update to just more of the creepy laughter. <laughs> and lastly, we have a graphic of Toby Fox asking for players to not upload the large sprite sheets online for at least a year, as he believes they may spoil the game for many people. Unfortunately, I doubt many people listened to his plea. This image was again also changed in the update to an even more bizarre image that read, You know what I hate? That's Beepus. The taste, the smell, the texture. Hey, you're drooling. 
Something tells me Toby really likes the word Beepus. Alright, and now onto the game's unused graphics, and there are a lot of them. Just like we saw in Deltarune, this game also has quite a few crude placeholder graphics. Like this crudely drawn dude, Test Monster 1, Test Monster 2, and a tall red boy just known as the Lava Test Creature. But let's call him Lava Test Larry. There's also Tile Guy, an old version of the spears that pop up from the ground that look pretty, uh, suggestive. Some early versions of Undyne's attacks, some crude placeholder hearts, arrow signs that were apparently related to Papyrus in some way, old prototype letters meant for Metaton's quiz, a graphic of the word touch, a placeholder graphic for Metaton's cooking show's jetpack section, text saying don't move, the debug tile sprites we also saw in Deltarune, a crudely drawn stable, and a crude rusted fridge. And while on the topic of crudely drawn things, there is also normally unseen concept art of some areas in the lab, as well as Undyne's house. Again like we saw in Deltarune, Undertale also followed the plan of these concepts pretty well. And nope, the crude placeholders don't end there. There's also some placeholder graphics for a spell command, which was never used. The Photoshop Flowey fight is perhaps one of the most disturbing and creepy boss fights I have ever seen, and the original concept art for it isn't any better. In fact, it's even more creepy. Like how could someone bring themselves to create something like this? Along with this is a crude flame that is presumably an early version of Flowey's flames, as well as unused graphics of Flowey's finger gun seen with the arm attached to the hand, instead of the hand being attached to vines as seen in the game. Next is another test monster that looks like a guard dog. This monster goes by the name Doge. Much unused, such armor. There's also this little guy, an unused robot NPC that would have apparently been seen in Hotland. We also got an overworld sprite of some ballet shoes, which you can get in the game but since they are hidden behind some grass they are never actually seen, a table with two chairs meant for Muffet's room, an unused chair that would have been used in Grillby's bar, a singular bone, and a candy dish sprite which we will get back to later. Next up is... BitBob, er I mean Big Bob as he's known in this game. If you've seen my Lost Bits video on Super Mario Bros. 2 for the NES, you may remember this unused placeholder sprite was found in that game. I just can't believe how close the name is to what I gave BitBob to. Not sure if it's just a coincidence, or if Toby Fox frequents the cutting room floor too, and put this in as a little easter egg since they use BitBob as their tab image. Additionally, there's also a smaller and inverted version of this sprite known as Met Fodder. Judging by the name, these mini bit bobs were probably placeholders for some sort of food or something, somewhere related with Metaton. Moving along, there are also early versions of Azrael's sword, Azrael's gun, the present used in Gift Trot's attack, a large heart sprite titled Confused Hearts, a faceless Gaster Blaster, White Eyed Sands, an alternate version of the snowman that gives us a piece of himself, a happy sprite of Washua, Napstablook adjusting a snail, a chaos bomb explosion meant for Photoshop Flowey's fight, and some overworld ice block, probably meant for Snowden. Okay, we got a few more to go. Next are some unused, goofy, flowey faces that according to Toby were planned to be seen if the player somehow could defeat Asgore in one hit. Then we have some unused battle sprites for Metaton EX, that would have supposedly been used after he is defeated. Next up are some unused portraits of Sans, Undyne, Alphys, Toriel, Flowey, and a blushing Papyrus. There's also a crying bird, an unused background for the Snowden shop, and sprites of a breaking egg carton likely meant for Metaton's cooking show. And lastly for the graphics are several unused sprite animations. First up are some walking animations of Temi, which are never used since the Temis are never seen walking in the overworld. 
Then there's some animations of Frisk with black hair walking alone and with Toriel. It is believed that these may have been the original style of Frisk. Other unused animations include Toriel walking while on the phone, Sans eating some nice cream, a confused papyrus, some early Undyne animations with different shading, Undyne unshaded, and a stigmatism with a red background and no outline. Apparently, due to the colored background here, this suggests that this sprite is from an early stage in the game's development. And now that we got all of those unused graphics out of the way, now let's move on to some more cool stuff. Thankfully, just like we saw in Deltarune, Undertale also has a debug mode, only it seems to have more functions in this game. Some of the functions are the same, like saving anywhere, instantly loading the previous save, increasing and decreasing the frame rate, and teleporting to the next, previous, or specific room. Some things are different, as in this game, the debug mode also lets us restart a room, add 500 gold, stop all music and sounds, start battles instantly, increase walk speed considerably, increase murder level, disable collision, and more. This of course is very helpful if you're looking to either mess around with the game, or just want to refight a certain monster without having to replay the game again. In battles, debug mode is also very useful as it can be used to again speed up or slow down time, increase health to 999, and depending on your playstyle, either set attack to 9999 and mercy to 0, or mercy to 9999 which lets you instantly spare any enemy, including those you can't normally spare, which revert to the Aaron sprite again like we saw earlier. There are additional debug functions that are only available in certain parts of the game. For example, by pressing the space key when viewing Frisk's reflection in Waterfall, the reflection sprite will be replaced by some unknown character. It has the same colored shirt as Chris from Deltarune, so maybe it's some sort of foreshadowing. If you press the J key when meeting Sans for the first time, it will zoom in on him, make a sound, and then the game will crash. Nice. Certain battles also have unique debug functions, like being able to increase Lesser Dog's neck length a lot, controlling if Papyrus attacks or not, and controlling Asgore's defense and strength. For Asgore, a red number will pop up in the top left of the screen. The higher the number, the more difficult Asgore's attacks will be, but the lower his defense will be as well. But the most interesting battle debugging, in my opinion, is during the Flowey fights. Yep, we're back to this guy again. Apart from the usual stuff, in this fight we can control it in a variety of different ways. These include activating any of the colored soul fight attacks, toggling the flamethrower, forcing Flowey to restart his attack, toggling his mouth, deactivating the souls, activating Flowey's vine, f-bomb, and teeth attacks, and more. It's honestly really fun to control this fight, and you know, break the game. If you would like to try the debug mode for yourself, I would recommend just googling it because there's a bit of a process to it using a hex editor, so I'm sure someone else can give you a much better tutorial than I can. And now, onto one of my favorite parts of the Lost Bit series, Unused Rooms. Thankfully again, Undertale has no shortage of these. First, let's talk about the dog check screens, which again are found just like we encountered in Deltarune. Now, these rooms are basically error handlers if a corrupted save file is loaded, or if you try loading into an area that doesn't exist. Undertale actually has two different variations of this occurrence. The first features a slapping song with the annoying dog dancing along. The other has a much more relaxed song with annoying dog just snoozing away. Now onto the proper unused rooms, first up is a room fittingly just known as Test Room. This grey room just has some dialogue boxes, probably used to test how the dialogue text would appear in the game. Text also pops up in this room, although it's completely unformatted for the text boxes. 
The first one says, La la, time to wake up and smell the pain, though it's a little shaky, followed by some laughter. Going straight down, the other text simply reads, Test Monster and its cohorts draw near. The latter's actually seen in another unused fight against three test froggets. Next up is Bullet Test, which is a really short experience. It's basically a test battle against a froggit with a bunch of bullet things that come from below, with the soul heart emitting some red and green beams. I say this is a short experience because after only a little while, the game will unfortunately crash. Room Sprite Check is exactly what it sounds like. A room which basically just tests all the sprites that are used in the game by quickly cycling through them. This is one of the trippiest test rooms I have ever seen. Next is Room Ruins 12B Old, which, based on the layout, appears to be an early version of the area in the ruins with the spider bake sale. In this room is also the unused candy bowl sprite we discussed earlier in the video. It will dispense one of the rock candies which are also otherwise unused. Tundra Roll Snow is next, and it's basically a room to test out the physics of rolling around snowballs. Unlike the one we saw used in the game which shrinks after not moving it, the one in this room instead grows when pushed, kind of like you'd expect a snowball to. Also related to snow, Tundra Placeholder is a large area filled with ice tiles. This was very likely used just to test the sliding mechanic. One of the creepiest unused rooms in Undertale is Room Gaster. A message written in the Wingdings font will appear on a screen while a creepy sounding track plays in the background. The message translates to Entry number 17 Dark, darker, yet darker. The darkness keeps growing, the shadows cutting deeper. Photon readings negative. This next experiment seems very, very interesting. What do you two think? Now I don't know Undertale lore all too well, so I don't really know the context of this entry. But based on the name, it is likely a message from W.D. Gaster, a mysterious, unseen character in the game. A sprite of an unknown character can also be found in this room here, and it is believed that this may be what he looks like. He has no collision, and after the sprite changes when interacting with it, it will vanish. See ya! As far as the creepy song goes, YouTuber Lidkus has discovered that it's actually just a lower pitched and slowed down version of Muffet the Spider's Laugh. Moving along, we have Room Water Prebird, an inaccessible room with two NPCs hiding in the tall grass. One mentions they love to catch bugs, which could either be a fourth wall break about this room being some sort of debugging room, or this could be the bug catching spot that Toriel mentions. The other NPC mentions that there is someone with a creepy smile behind you. After talking to the NPC again, it will say that the person with the creepy smile disappeared. Some fans believe this creepy smiling person could either be Gaster, Flowey, or Kara. Next, Room Water Redacted is a small room with a weirdly shaped white NPC in the middle that is only visible when getting near. This NPC also speaks in Wingdings, and its message when translated just says, Redacted. This too could be Gaster as they both speak in Wingdings. Interestingly, exiting this room also automatically takes you to the game's sound test screen. Room Water 13 appears to be a large test area for Waterfall's assets, namely the tall grass. In a similar manner, Room Water Mushroom also contains several Waterfall assets in addition to a crystal and an NPC. Room Water 7 Old is a room that was probably meant to be used in Waterfall as it again uses several of its assets. This area also has some otherwise unseen torches which can be lit just by interacting with them. After they are all lit, an invisible path that leads to basically nowhere will be outlined by some crudely drawn assets. Room Overworld is a large but mostly empty test room with several lava test larries. The only other notable thing in this room is an area that triggers a flowy monologue which then transitions to a battle sequence. Next, although Room Fire 4 uses some assets from Waterfall, Based on the name and the music that is played here, it was more likely intended to be used as an area in Hotland. 
Similarly, Room Fire 10 Old also uses some waterfall assets, but was again probably meant to be used in Hotland. There's not too much here besides this long conveyor belt thing. Falling off this conveyor belt leads to another unused area, Room Fire 10 A Old. This area just has another long conveyor belt, a bowl of dry dog food, and a door which just leads us back up to the previous room. Okay, hope you're not getting tired of these unused rooms yet, because we have two more notable ones to go. Room Monster Align Test just quickly shows a distorted memory head enemy before it disappears. As the name implies, this was also probably just used for testing. Room Meet Undyne Old is pretty self-explanatory again. This is an early version of the room where you first meet Undyne, but with some Snowden NPCs and waterfall assets. There are also some boards in the middle here which basically obstruct Undyne for the entire scene, making this room pretty pointless. Ha! You thought that was it? Bonus bit! I kept this lost bit for last because it isn't actually in the game at all, but rather on the official Undertale website. Simply by right-clicking on the page and viewing the source code, the following secret message can be found. What are you doing? Looking for secrets? Don't put your nose where it doesn't belong. Or you might learn something you don't like. He he he. Whatever you say, Mr. Fox, whatever you say. And with that concludes this super long Lost Bits video on Undertale, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this is the longest Lost Bits video that I'll make for quite a while. So big shoutouts if you made it to the end here. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to slap a like down below and also let me know what other Lost Bits videos you would like to see next. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out my Deltarune Lost Bits video by clicking on the card right here. And if you would like to stay up to date with me and the channel, be sure to subscribe here as well as swing by my other social media things which will all be linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.